This video is a first look at the recently released OBSPOT UVC to NDI adapter. UVC stands for the USB Video Device Class, and it's a class of devices that transmit in-stream video over USB, typically used by webcams connected to computers. NDI is the Network Device Interface Protocol developed by NewTek. NDI lets you send high-quality video and audio over your local network. When Obspot announced that they were going to produce a UVC to NDI adapter, I offered to test it and make a video about the device. So let's take a look at the unboxing, an overview, and some examples of how I might use it. The adapter comes nicely packaged in a cardboard box. I placed an Obspot Tiny 2 on the table to show the comparative size and demonstrate some of the features. Opening the box, we find only a few items. First, there's the user guide booklet, then the warranty policy sheet, then the adapter itself, and finally, a USB cable that is Type-C to Type-C and a small Type-C to Type-A adapter. The OBSPOT adapter has a metal casing with quarter 20 threaded mounting holes on each side. Looking at one end, we find USB Type-C ports for incoming power and for the UVC webcam input. A USB Type-A port is for the receiver of the optional OBSPOT remote control, which I'll show shortly. The other end has a slot for a user-supplied micro SD card, which allows you to record video and audio. There's also an RJ45 port used to connect the adapter to your local area network. Note that this port also supports power over Ethernet, which I'll also show soon. I've attached the adapter to a small tripod to make it easier to show the cable connections. Also shown is the OBSPOT Tiny Smart Remote 2 and its receiver. First, I'll plug in the USB cable coming in from the Tiny 2 camera. Then add the remote receiver into the Type-A port. Then it's time to add the power cable that's attached to a USB power supply on the other end. This powers both the adapter and the camera. Note that it takes a few seconds before the camera gets power and lights up. The next step is to turn the adapter around and insert a micro SD card into the slot. And finally, attach an Ethernet cable that connects to your LAN into the remaining port. Using the remote control, I can use the gimbal control pad to pan and tilt the camera. If there are any existing presets in the camera, they can be selected with the P1 through P3 buttons above the pad. The plus and minus buttons zoom the camera in and out. The ability to control pan, tilt, and zoom is commonly referred to as PTZ and is part of the UVC specification for devices that support it. As mentioned, the adapter supports power over Ethernet, often called PoE. When power is supplied in this way, there's no need for the USB power cable that's normally attached on the other side of the adapter. Here I'm using a 30-watt gigabit PoE injector adapter that has an input for an Ethernet connection and an output that sends both data and power over the cable that attaches to the adapter. In many cases, this can simplify installations as there's only one cable to connect to the network and power and one cable that connects to the camera. So let's take a look at some ways to use the bi-directional connection created by the adapter. I've placed the Tiny 2 on a light stand and recorded it with another camera so you can see its movements as we continue with the examples. First, I'll open the OBSPOT Center application. As you can see, it opens onto the console page automatically connected to a tiny 4K that's attached to the computer via USB. When I click on the drop-down list of devices, we also see a tiny camera that's connected to the computer. Note that we don't yet see the NDI adapter. However, after waiting a few seconds and reopening the list, the adapter appears. When I select the adapter, it opens a new page that gives information about the device and its connection, but it does not currently have a console or other pages we would normally see for other cameras. Instead, to control and configure the camera and adapter, click on the Enter NDI Web button. The default username is admin, and the password is also admin. Note that this is case sensitive, beginning with an uppercase A. Notice that there's an SD card warning at the top of the screen that alerts me that the currently inserted card used for recording 
as well as one way of doing firmware updates, is a low-speed card and really should be replaced with a more suitable card. There are a few screens available. The dashboard has information about the adapter and many of its settings. Here's where you would enable or disable the NDI video stream and tally lights. I'll talk about tally lights soon. This is also where I can start recording to the SD card and see the time increment as the recording progresses until I stop the recording. We can also see some information about the SD card. On the network screen, there's some basic and advanced configuration items for both the connection and how NDI handles permissions and performance. Clicking on the control page, we find the controls that are similar to that found on the OpSpot Central for cameras that are connected to the computer. So we have a gimbal control, and it can see any of the PTZ presets that are already present in the camera. There's a page for image adjustments and a page for some other things like configuring the voice control. The media page shows the frame rate and settings for the NDI output and for video recording. On the settings page, there are a few more configuration items. One important feature is this is one of the places where you can do firmware updates. The other way to update the firmware is to download the binary file from the OBSPOT site and copy it into the root directory of the SD card and place it into the adapter while the adapter is turned off. When you then power on the adapter, it will sense the binary file and update the firmware automatically. And it also removes the binary file from the card. If you have this screen open during the update, you'll see a firmware update progress screen, a good thing because on the device itself, there's no indication that an update is in progress. The OBSBOT team has been very responsive to beta testing and reviewer feedback. For example, this screen currently shows that the firmware installed is a pre-release version that enables the PTZ functionality to be controlled by client software, in my case, vMix. So let's take a look at the output from the adapter. I've loaded the NDI Studio Monitor, one of the components of the NDI Tools NDI Core Suite that's free to download from the NDI website. Clicking on the menu, lists the NDI feeds currently available on my home network. These include a Mevo Start wireless camera, the OBSPOT adapter, and the output from vMix. When I select the OBSPOT NDI adapter, it displays the live video feed from the camera. Using the web interface's gimbal control, I can pan and tilt the camera as well as adjust the zoom level. I can access the two previously stored PTZ presets, here named wide and close. Next, I'll move to another position and store it as a third preset and rename it to Closer. When moving the cursor to the Studio Manager screen, the NDI PTZ controls appear. Clicking on the numbers 1 to 3 activates the three presets currently stored in the camera. There's a control to adjust focus and to set it to autofocus. I'll use the pan tilt pad to move to a new position and store a fourth preset and move it again to set a fifth preset. And then test to see that they're all working properly. Now let's go back to the dashboard and start recording to the SD card. You can see that the light next to the SD card is flashing and the recording counter is incrementing, and it will continue to do so until I end the recording. The video will then be available on the SD card. And finally, let's see how to use the NDI feed in the video switching program. In this case, vMix 4K. Note that although all editions of vMix can ingest and output NDI, only the 4K Pro and Max editions can control PTZ cameras and create presets for the position. 
To show how the NDI feed can be accessed by multiple clients, I've set up the desktop with Studio Monitor in the upper left and vMix on the right. vMix is currently set up with three inputs. The first is the Tiny 4K, the second is the original Tiny, each of them are pointing at the adapter, and they're attached to the computer via USB. The third input is the Mevo Start coming in via NDI, and it's pointing to the Tiny 2 camera that's attached to the UVC to NDI adapter. Now let's add a new input for the adapter. I click on Add Input, then select the NDI Desktop Capture panel. All of the available NDI feeds are displayed, and I'll select the OBSPOT adapter and choose OK. It then appears as input number 4. When I click on that Inputs Cut button, it puts the video in the Program Output window at the top right of the screen, and the title bar of the input turns green, indicating that it is the active input. Because we previously configured the adapter's tally functionality, both the light on the side of the adapter and in the top border of Studio Monitor turn red, indicating that the video feed is in a program output. When I click on the Cut button for Input 2, it becomes the green program window's active input, and the OBSPOT NDI input moves to the orange preview window on the left. The tally indicators on the adapter and studio monitor show green, meaning the device is currently in a preview window. When the adapter is in neither the program nor preview window, the tally indicator does not display. Now let's configure the PTZ functionality of the new input. Start by clicking on the input's gear, then click on PTZ. If it's not already selected, choose the Sony Visca over IP for the device type. The IP address should populate automatically. Then click on Connect to enable the controls that let me zoom, pan, and tilt the camera. vMix allows for creating new virtual inputs at particular positions, with optionally storing a thumbnail of the original scene in each input preview. Next, I use the controls to set various positions and create new inputs for each one. Then, by selecting each PTZ input, the camera moves to the predetermined position for each input. We've already seen that I was able to adjust the camera position in the vMix PTZ setup screen. Because vMix lets you control inputs in a variety of ways, the one I like to use for PTZ control is by using a handheld Xbox controller. I have it configured to control any PTZ input that's either in the program or preview window, and I've dedicated a button to updating the input settings to any new position I move it to, including updating the input thumbnail. But that's a bit beyond this basic introduction. All in all, I'm very pleased with the performance and capabilities of this new device, and I'm very happy to add it to my growing tools that support the NDI protocols. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.